I want to set a little bit of a tone for what I'm about to present, which is another message. Um, part of the Eye of the Needle series is working in the intuitive, the psychic realms, the unconscious. And so I've begun to put out a series of messages that contain a lot of material that is basically coming into the mix of my writing and my broadcasting which comes from a place that I think we can say is the unconscious dream world that I pull from and have pulled from for years. These messages, I've been asked, are these channeled messages? And the answer is that depending on your definition of channeling, they're channeled. Um, obviously, channeling is rife with a lot of charlatans and invasion of minds of memes by entities it's not something to, to be tread lightly upon but in terms of how these messages come through i simply say that they come from my soul group from my higher self and from my aspect selves who are connected much like a psychic net network so a lot of the information that comes in overlaps a lot of the things I've talked about for years, but the language is somewhat different. It generally uses a second person method of addressing the audience rather than myself when I'm speaking to an audience. I use first person to designate myself as the speaker. And so these narratives basically come through in chunks, sort of like a, a zip file, generally after um, events that are taking place in the sky, psychic disturbances. I usually wake up with a sense that these messages are coming through and then I begin to scribe them. And so mm, this message began being scribed on November 29th uh, the time of the frost moon, full moon, and also the, the lunar eclipse that occurred. So over a period of about four days, this message came in. I don't really edit the messages. I do go through them to check for flow. You'll notice as we read through the transcript, which is handwritten, and then um, I have software that basically takes my handwriting and converts it into text for easier reading. But I do scribe this by hand on, on an iPad with a, uh, with a pencil stylus. So the messages pretty much come through the way they are. Um, there are oddities in spelling, paragraphs, and sentence structure that are anomalous to the way that I normally speak. And those are the things that we note as we go into this message. So when we tap into our own inner resources, we can become very aware of an intelligence that sits outside of ourselves. That's the scope of the dream world. That's the place where we begin to tap into the greater aspects of cosmic consciousness. And so in a sense, to say it as channeling is fair, but more correctly, this is basically psychic, intuitive probing and downloads that come to inform the topic matter that I'm talking about. So it kind of gets complex and yet at the same time, it's rather simple. I'm aware of when these things are coming through. And generally within a day of the time that they begin to come in, I begin to scribe them. They come in in chunks. So I will get what is basically the first textual 
rendering of the general subject matter. And a lot of times it's not linear because I'm not linear, but generally it will begin to fill in subject matter around it and it will take a sequence as it goes through. So the message that we're going to look at for this session has five segments to it. And the message itself is the time of great remembering. And so we'll go into this and I'll bring up a little bit of commentary at the end of it as we, uh, as we go through the message. And so this message came through, as you can see here, um, received 11-29-2020 to 12-3-2020 under the full moon and eclipse, the great remembering. Under pressure, diamonds are formed by processes of pressure, heat, and time. Inside your earth, and also in space as you know it, pressure of the forces of volcanism push the diamond structures to the surface via pipes from where they are formed at as much as 90 miles or more inside the earth and delivered during deep source volcanic eruptions and impacts from deep space objects. And so these forces create from dense amorphous materials something that is structurally harder and with great properties of light, clarity, and definition. Indeed, without such sources, the raw elements would languish in darkness, never bringing forth their spectacular beauty. This is a metaphor of this pressure, which is for the time which you now occupy. It is the compression cycle, which we have called this going through the eye of a needle process. It is also an emblem of your own diamond body, which forms as one endures the process of inner darkness to emerge as true shining ones. These forces in the world's systems are greatly amplified as time has both speeded up and slowed down. A paradox of two worlds colliding. The order is in transition in this year of double vision. Valley of incision. You're in a valley of what you call decision, but it is not obvious in ways you yet see, an incision. What you now experience is the demand by current forces to dramatically engage the stark contrast of this realm's increasing schisms and dichotomies. Polarities are now defined as cutting edges, deep chasms and rifts in the consensual reality streams. With this comes both great clarity and great pain. Really, you are experiencing probable outcomes wherein both or more outcomes are being processed in slices of temporal suspension of unconscious space. This processing is very deliberative in that it is polling human consciousness for probable outcomes in a manner that humanity has never experienced in this iteration of your unfolding. The activation of full will and volition from which limited consciousness has shielded the peoples of Earth is by degrees being lifted. Because of the reworking of the human synaptic nodes some 200,000 or more of your years ago, along with the reduced capacitance of the neurological system and DNA modifications, humans were, in a sense, absolved of the law of intended consequences or what you call manifestation. In a sense, you became a type of semi-intelligent automaton, knowing neither actual good or evil. The equation was then inverted by these false gods as original sin. This is why you now may experience hiccups in normal mundane affairs, why your political system, media, and business economic cycles appear contradictory and even people around you may seem to radically change from moment to moment. It may also present as a reality stream that is stalled, seemingly stuck in holding patterns. Contrarily, it may feel as if one has just jumped entire lanes and wound up on the opposite side of a freeway driving in the wrong direction. 
For most, this appears as intrusive, an irritation, or an intolerable sense of suspense because most dwell in a linear sequence which demands resolutions as part of what you call problem solving. You see enduring outcomes as solutions to problems, which is part of the mechanistic nature of 3D beings who, rather than allowing for novel new outcomes outside the prescribed order of effects, attempt to impose their order on organic intuitive processes. If you can learn to abide with the ambiguity in the liminal state, to forestall anxiety, anger, or hope, but to rest in the marvelous process of unfolding, to set intentions which create new environments in which you can move with intrepid skill and understand that adversarial events are your training for higher visioning, that there are more than two pieces on the game board. Plan your moves outside of time. Become a temporal ninja. In this new environment, all pieces move as in a dance, not as in combat. This is an opportunistic environment in which a single move can yield multiple outcomes. The probabilities are logarithmic, then exponential. You will begin to see around corners. Segment three, new economies. You will experience new economic challenges in the near future. These will be part of both the false AI global reset and an organic force that wishes to redirect energies toward an imaginative, intuitive system of exchange of values based on the inherent worth of each one's own soul mission. Your current system is predatory, mechanistic, and based on concepts of usury, lack, and limited consciousness. When you see lack, you must learn to see opportunity. You must learn that this new environment is one of expansion. The boom and bust cycles are the works of those who have taught you over millennia that physicality is a zero-sum game, that input equals output, wherein you must learn to counter that the quantum is limitless. Segment four, the ancient future. These years, 2021 to 2030, are formative to your species in bring, bridging the gap between this archaic system of servitude to the so-called masters of materialism and that which is called industrial or technological revolutions in your history, but were engineered systems of slavery. That this cosmic energy now beckons you to fully own your heritages as children of source, hence as being gods yourselves. The historical masters of this realm were themselves false gods who enslaved you by altering your DNA, short-circuiting your synaptic systems, splitting your hemispheres, and placing you under a grid work of time that is unnatural and destructive to your higher capabilities. Your ancient forebears, the ones you recall in your most cherished dreams, were translucent beings of light and vast intelligence who lived in close harmony to the earth, which was also similarly predated by these alien conquistadors, the Draco Anunnaki. You are the inheritors of this pillaged legacy. The universe always favors equilibrium. This is the time of the great remembering. The forces set in play are yours each to harness. And you begin this process by seeking out the voices of your ancient ones, listening and hearing their cries to their children, of whom are you now living in this environment. Your very DNA coding is sacred. Do not allow any to inject you. Now in your visioning, bring to your remembrance these codes, these sequences, of which there are 12. Ask. When you go into a meditation, invoke them. When you dream, travel into their realms. Learn their ancient rhymes, songs, and dances, for they danced in honor of the sun. Your forebears observed the passages of what you call time and long cycles. They followed the movements of planets, stars, and comets. The orbs are their elliptical with their clock dial. 
Because they lived in the tempos of the galactics, their lives were long and they planned according to the harmonics of Earth, stars, and sun. The steady hum of your workaday world, the 10 grid system of Chronos Saturnian time cages have shortened your attention spans and your lives. Understand this. You generate the very time fields in which you exist. Your very thoughts create the probabilities from which you draw the next moment and the stacked moments which spiral into your infinite streams of creation. Your devices, mechanisms, myopic scientific procedures, and the endless slicing of your consciousness has blinded you to the grandeur that exists within and without you. This includes the wonderment of your natural realms, which hold keys to your own inner mysteries. The creatures of this natural order, which can perform feats that you cannot. Can a man soar as a hawk? Can she burrow into the heart of the earth as a mole? Can you hear as the wolf or swim as the dolphin, spin as the spider, or lift as the ant? They are the arcana of another level of unfoldment, yet they are relegated to mere accessories, or worse, menaces and nuisances to be subjugated, subdued, or extincted. Their very DNA are cryptic key pairs to ciphers of your own legacies and destinies. Their minds and senses can be merged into a superintelligence when dwelled with in harmony. These things your ancient ones knew. This is the time of the Great Remembering. Segment 5, Perilous Time. Understand that you have entered into a most perilous period of events. The resolution of several deeply entwined temporal platforms, what you in linear thinking call timelines, is occurring on many levels of your civilization. Not only your political, economic, and social orders, but entire soul groups which encompass several eons of interconnected planetary involvement of your species. Resolutions of parallel historical entanglement wherein the shocking truths about the origins of your present world system are coming into disclosure. Both the ancient roots of the actual evil that has been visited upon you, and the very essence of your own destiny. The fabric of your world is threaded by the consciousness you inhabit and codes secreted into your DNA. As was spoken earlier, of these sequences, there are 12. Forget the nonsense of DNA. 80% of your genetic code does not exist in this dimension. Plan was formulated long ago to truncate this interdimensional code base. This is literally the inter eternity code which connects you and all your generations forward and backward to the cycles of the earth, sun, and cosmos, the continuum. You are eternal beings by birthright. The continuity of the soul was a gift that was not granted amongst many other species, both on this world and in other realms. The predators whom we have spoken of prior came to capture that heritage to corrupt your seed and, if possible, terminate your birthright. They, and their not-so-human vassals, have worked tirelessly for millennia to prevent you from ever accessing that which would elevate your unfoldment during the most crucial period, which is this time. In this year of what is called 2020, they seek to unloose this plan under the banner of engineer disease. They have cultivated fears, pretexts to begin unlawful access to eternity codes. This is your DNA coding. It is sacred. Do not allow any to inject you. Know this, that you and even your children are living code banks which Creator endowed you with as the keepsake of a mission to perfect beings who can operate in free will and love. That which is unlawful would seek to forever abort the grand hosting of all unsold beings, both in this world and on others. Your earth is a gateway, a galactic crossroads. You, her inhabitants, are the maps, 
living legends to a schema of cosmic proportions. Be watchful, wax wise, open your hearts and your eyes. There are amongst you the invisible ones, powerful allies of humankind who also prepared for this time. Your purity of purpose and will to prevail is a heart-like beacon by which you will be seen by them. Let your light so shine that it never be dimmed. It is feared by the nemesis and honored in the course of eternity. Take from this what is profitable. Leave aside that which does not resonate. Your move, peace out. And so that's the message that came through on the full moon of this month. It's dense. Even within the simplest of terms, there's a lot of concepts packed into it, concepts that I'm still unpacking myself. Um, again, the message always comes with a caveat. Take what is profitable and leave, leave aside that which does not resonate. Again, this is a material that's being processed through for the creation of the book. It's part of an ongoing process of finding even my own voice as we go into the eye of the needle process. We have big times ahead of us. We have the um, 1221 winter solstice, which we will be doing a live show for. And um, the grand conjunction of Jupiter conjunct with Saturn, which is a 20 year cycle and a momentous time to be occurring as it does in Aquarius. So that gives you kind of a perspective on where all of this is going, the material that's being developed and the source of where it's coming from. My words have no more weight than the words you hear inside of yourself. My thoughts are no greater than the thoughts you yourself have. Tap into your dreams, tap into your psychic influences. The days ahead are going to demand it. I'm Randy Moggins. This is Off Planet TV, Off Planet Radio, The Eye of the Needle. The truth is inside you.